Second story comes from us um, out of Granada Hills. And um, if you haven't seen some of these videos, then you're living under a rock or you need to expand a little bit where you get your news from. But you've probably seen these videos, especially in San Francisco and Los Angeles, where uh, criminals are just walking into, doesn't matter, TJ Maxx, Macy's, Walmart, Walgreens. They're just walking in and like these two gentlemen, um, loading up a giant backpack or just taking stacks of clothes off the racks and walking out. And we can really trace this back to District Attorney Gaston, who, Gascon, Gascon, can you look that up, Chris? Is it Gascon, G-A-S-C-O-N, I think is our District Attorney here in LA. Um, district Attorney uh, Gascon, I think is his name. He was the District just, uh, district Attorney, you know, the head the head lawyer, the head, the head, the head uh, legal legal mind in the, in the city of San Francisco. Is it Gascon? Is that his name? Gascon, Gascon with an accent above the O. Oh, there you go. G A S C that little French N no, thing a, over no, the O. Just an accent. Oh, just an accent. Okay. And then uh, uh, G A S C O N. Yeah, Gascon. Um, what a douche this guy is. Um, <laughs> so he ruined San Francisco and then did such a bang up job up there. Somehow we elected him down here in Los Angeles. And uh, partially him, partially this Proposition 47 that passed a couple of years ago in 2014, but is now kind of just catching on with criminals. What it did was it made uh, basically petty thefts, small crimes, uh, vandalism, uh, shoplifting under $950. It changed it from a felony to a misdemeanor. And so District Attorney Gascon, Gascon has basically said that, hey, for all misdemeanors, we're just not going to prosecute. Police officers don't bother arresting them. We're not going to prosecute. So if it's if it's a misdemeanor, which many things, thanks to Prop 47, were reclassified from a felony to a misdemeanor. If it's misdemeanor, you know, prostitution, solicitation, uh, shoplifting, vandalism, a bunch of these criteria. Effectively, they call it nine hundred fifty dollars, but kind of hard to gauge. So. Just kind of, if you uh, Kentucky windage it, uh, basically anything that doing less than a thousand dollars worth of damage, uh, we're just not going to prosecute. We're not going to arrest. Don't waste your time, Mr. And Mrs. Police Officer. And so this is the byproduct. You can just walk into a store like TJ Maxx and steal, you know, fifty pairs of forty dollar jeans and just walk right out. And the company, TJ Maxx in this situation, they're terrified to stop you because if you touch them, you can sue them for whatever you want to sue them for. There, there's just such, oh, we're such a litigious society that the store doesn't want to do anything to stop these people. They can't call the police because the police know that if they arrest these individuals, they're going to be let out immediately with no bail. And then the district attorney's office is going to choose not to prosecute them. So it's just a big waste of time and resources for everybody. And the criminals know they can get away from, uh, get away for it, get away with it. So if you look at what's happening to San Francisco, there was a, a video that went viral of a guy on a bicycle and a big trash can or trash bag just throwing a bunch of over-the-counter pharmaceuticals into his bag and then leaving and robbing the place blind and then coming back two hours later doing it again because each individual instance, if it's not more than $950 of stolen goods in one cumulative trip, no one's going to stop you. No police is going to arrest you. No district attorney office is going to prosecute you. And so what we have here is we have the exact opposite of the broken window theory. And for anybody who's who's never read about the broken window theory, it's really controversial, even in my mind. It's very hard for me to square this in my head as a libertarian. And this is, you know, this is frankly why no one person is all Republican or all Democrat or all liberal or all progressive or all libertarian, because, you know, it, it's hard to square some of these things in our head. And let me tell you just a little bit about the broken window theory or the, the broken window theory of criminology. And you should really read the Wikipedia page on this if you're interested, but I'll just read the first, uh, the first paragraph here. And it says the broken window theory is a criminological theory that states that the visible signs of crime Antisocial behavior and civil disorder create an urban environment that encourages further crime and disorder, including serious crimes. The theory suggests that policing methods that target minor crimes, such as vandalism, loitering, public drinking, jaywalking, fare evasion, uh, you know, jumping the turnstiles in New York, uh, shoplifting, they help create an atmosphere of order and lawfulness, right? So the theory kind of goes like this. The theory kind of goes like, 
you have a broken window in a small strip mall, right? And the broken window in that one store causes the other stores to look a little bit less appealing. So maybe rent goes down or the occupancy rate goes down or it becomes harder to rent out the other units in that small strip mall. And eventually as occupancy go down and value goes down and the neighbors keep less care of their property because the window over there is broken, it just kind of drives down the over Oh, it drives down the overall appeal, the overall property value. Now maybe you have more people loitering and if you have more people loitering, you might have more people up to no good. And if you have more people up to no good, you might have people selling drugs. And then and then it just escalates where the people selling drugs now get into bigger crimes and bigger crimes and then something goes wrong. And then eventually you have a shooting in the strip mall, right? And this was kind of the methodology that was adopted by the police commissioner and uh, Mayor Giuliani when they started to clean up New York. For any of you that have friends that are older or grew up in New York in the 70s and 80s, or even if you watch these old movies like Taxi Driver, or Serpico, a bunch of these movies that were uh, uh, taking place in New York in the 70s and 80s, you know, that beautiful downtown Times Square, Manhattan, what you're picturing right now is New York, that was a cesspool. It was a shithole of crime and drugs and vagrancy and people not feeling safe taking the subway. It wasn't this beautiful kind of Times Square Manhattan that you're picturing from like one of the Marvel movies or one of these commercials. Um, it was a real shithole. And then Giuliani, and I can't remember who the, I cannot remember who the uh, police commissioner was at the time. They basically latched on to this idea of the broken window theory and they said, hey, we're gonna fix the city by fixing the small stuff first. So if there's a broken window in Times Square, we're gonna find that, that property owner and we're gonna find him again and we're gonna find him again until they fix the window and they make it look presentable. And we're gonna stop the, the, the hoodlums from jumping the turnstiles at the subway. And we're not gonna let people camp overnight in front of businesses down in Times Square. And we're not gonna let people abuse drugs publicly and openly, right? And so their thought process was, if we cut down on the small crimes, right, we start policing the small stuff that that doesn't feel like it matters, well then you start to stop the larger crimes because other than probably crimes of passion, you know, somebody walks in on their spouse cheating on them, they kill somebody, other than crimes of passion, criminal behavior from what I've read about, and I'm no expert in this field, actually I'd love to interview an expert in this field of criminal uh, behavior and criminology, um, but from the little bit that I have read on it, it's pretty linear, right? Like most people just don't wake up one day and they're like this hardened killer, gang member, rapist. It it does start with the small stuff. It starts with the shoplifting at TJ Maxx when you're a teenager and then jumping the turnstiles at the subway or the rail system and then, you know, breaking this small law and this law and this law. And then eventually it just escalates to where breaking the law becomes the norm or because you're now hanging out with a more and more and advanced, a more and more advanced criminal element, eventually these poor people get themselves into a situation um, where they start just committing bigger and bigger crimes, right? And so this broken window theory is an idea of policing, of civil management, of government control, where it's like you really crack down on the small stuff in hopes that there's upstream, you know, this cascading effect of lack of bigger crimes. And, you know, sometimes this is where it's really hard for me to square this theory, which I 100% believe works at a community level, square this theory with my like deep seated libertarian beliefs of, you know, smaller government. I don't want the police force to be a bunch of stormtroopers. And, you know, the dangerous outcome of this type of policing method or this type of community method is that eventually you get to the extreme sides of it where the New York Police Department had a unconstitutional policy of stop and frisk, where if they just didn't like what you look like, or they thought you were the wrong color color for the neighborhood, or they thought you were wearing the wrong kind of pants, they would just stop you and frisk you to see if you had drugs or weapons on you. Now, the sad thing is, in a lot of ways, that did help reduce crime, but it also um, uh, viciously, viciously violated the constitutional rights of individuals. Like the police just don't have the right to step up to you and search you for no reason on the side of the street because they think you're in the wrong neighborhood or they don't like what you look like or they don't like the color of your skin or the type of baseball hat you're wearing. So it is a dangerous, slippery slope. But what we're having here now is we're having the other side. We're having like the reverse broken window theory where the district attorney's office, previously Gascon, Gascon, Gascon in uh, San Francisco and now leading the charge here in Los Angeles, when you refuse to let cops intervene in small crimes, when you refuse to prosecute for small crimes, 
um, we're starting to see bigger crimes become an issue, right? So you can look at a lot of cities right now across America where defund the police has been a big deal or they've tried to reduce the size of the police force. You you handcuff basically the police officers from intervening in these small crimes. And now we're seeing the, the real crimes that really matter, the violent crime, the murder, the rape, the attack with deadly weapons. We're starting to see this escalate in basically all major cities across America, which is just disgusting. So, you know, there's no perfect answer, but I think the the local governments through the district attorney's office and through their police force basically just letting criminals know it's open season as long as they don't steal more than x amount of dollars it's craziness it's just craziness right i mean I, i'd be lying if i if i told you i hadn't thought about just walking into the mall get a couple hundred dollars worth of uh tennis shoes that i really want just walk out right what can they do i mean it's just it's just a really really dangerous precedent to be set um so that's kind of story too and i don't know i don't know how this is going to end but I don't think it's going to end particularly particularly well, or we'll see the pendulum swing from where we are now. You know, we'll see the pendulum swing politically the other way dramatically, and we'll have a Giuliani type character who the 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 populace just gives carte blanche and a blank check to to fix the criminality element because you know eventually these stores have to turn a profit to stay open, right? There's there's already stories of Walgreens, Rite Aid, um, grocery stores in the San Francisco area. They're just closing down shop because you you can't make a profit if half of your clientele is just walking out with a free nine hundred and fifty dollars on every trip. So uh, I hope this ends well. I don't. Th I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And then I think eventually the people of Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, we're just going to have to vote in uh, mayors and district attorneys who actually want to be tough on crime, and the pendulum will hopefully swing the other way. So that's our our second story for tonight and. I hope there's an end in sight, but I don't really see an end in sight.